Hey guys, welcome back to some more videos. The Explorer of Horror here, the Horror Boy, and uh, I am taking reviews right now, so I'm gonna be pretty busy doing uh, requested reviews. I've already gotten uh, a pretty good amount of requests already, so uh, I'll be busy doing that stuff. But before I get into that stuff, I wanted to talk about a movie that I had seen recently, and um, it's a movie that I thought was a really solid horror film. Like this, to me, is how you do horror the right way, and I think this is an example. Of like just this massive respect I have for like foreign horror films and why I love watching foreign horror films because every single style is so different. Like the Italian styles of like Fulci and Argento, even those two directors' styles are two different things. And you know, uh, I've seen just so many different uh, realms of horror. It's just so cool to see different ways of horror around the world and um it's really refreshing especially with this bland in my opinion where we're at right now with hollywood produced horror films uh mainstream stuff i don't really review many lot a lot anymore because they're just to me they're the same thing over and over again whereas i can watch a movie like this and this of course is a uh is a japanese horror anthology film from 2004 called Three Extremes. It's got 7.0 on IMDb and has three directors. Uh, Fruit Chan, who I believe made the first segment. Takashi Miike, which made the, the third segment. And then Chan Wook Park, which made the second segment. And this is a really awesome anthology. If you're a big horror anthology fan, I'm pretty sure you're going to love this movie. Um, and to me... It's called Three Extremes, so obviously it's got some really dark, uh, disturbing subject matter. But it's not like other movies where it overtakes the movie. It becomes the movie. It's it's a movie with no plot, no story, and no structure, just gore and stuff like that. Just violence for the sake of violence. Shock for the sake of shock. It's not like that. It's the way that I... It's if This is how most extreme movies were made i would really like you know get into because like even though it is it is it is like not like wall-to-wall -wall gore it's just certain subjects in this movie are really dark and depraved um but what i love is this movie still has plot lines it still is well made still has good cinematography still has wonderful direction by all three directors still has wonderful lighting still feels like movies like films that have purpose to me um i'm not a big fan i know there are fans of movies out there that are just violence for the sake of violence that's cool. It's just not my personal thing. I love movies like this where it, it is dark, it is depraved at certain points, but it is still a well-made movie. And I think all three segments are fantastic. Um, of course, Takashi Miike, I had seen Audition. I really enjoy that movie. Um, if you haven't seen Audition yet, I really recommend you check it out. It is a fantastic Takashi Miike film. And uh, I also have Itchy the Killer, which hopefully I could see that one day as well, which apparently is a completely different movie than uh, Audition is. Because Audition is like a almost two hours, I think it's over two hours long of just slow build, slow build, slow build. Um, and in this movie, Takashi Miike's uh, third segment, the third segment of the movie is Takashi Miike's, uh, is, is, is kind of similar. It's a very slow build, creepy, atmospheric. It's not reliant on jump scares to scare you. It's more reliant on images to scare you and ideas to creep you out and make you feel uncomfortable. Um, but we'll get to that stuff when we get to it. I do also want to point out that I will not be doing like major spoilers for this movie because I want you guys to go out and check this film out for yourselves because it was a hell of an experience and there are certain points in this movie that are terrifying and the twists I feel are very important to that. So I will not be revealing the twists. Um, this will be me discussing these movies with you guys, giving you guys my raw thoughts on them and reviewing them for you guys. So this is going to be a non-spoiler review. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Now, the first segment of this film is called Dumplings. Now, this is a really slow one. It's a slow build to the last part of the segment. You know, it's one of those segments where everything is leading up to the last 15, 20, uh, 15, 
I'd say 10 or 15 minutes is where it builds up to. And I would say if you're not a fan of slow burns, you're not going to like it. But to me, I love slow burns that have a good payoff, that have a payoff that's worth it, that's memorable. Um, I can't stand slow burns that have a terrible twist or a shitty ending. Um, I can't stand slow burn films that don't have the characters, don't have the acting, and don't have the direction and the story. If you don't have those things, it's hard to make a slow burn film. Now, there is a full version of Dumplings available to watch. It's actually a full-fledged movie, which is pretty cool because I actually really love this first segment. Um, again, very slow, very character-driven, very dialogue-driven. But to me, that's the core of horror right there. You're building characters. You're building tension. You're building storylines. That, to me, is some of the most important things about horror films. And all three segments are very psychological. And you guys know me. That's right up my alleyway. I love psychological horror. I love the horror that can get into your mind and make you think about things and disturb you and play tricks on your head. I love horror movies like that. And... Dumplings is no exception. This movie, or this segment in this movie, is uh, really well done. Uh, direction is on point. Uh, it's a very patient segment. Nothing's rushed. Nothing's got any hint of like high energy or anything like that. It's not shaky cam and sporadic edi editing and jump scares. It is about the basic core of scary of scaring people. And it is this really crazy idea that has an intense twist that I won't get into. I don't want to spoil it. If you want to know the twist, you have to see the movie for yourself or see a spoiler review because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. If you haven't seen Three Extremes yet, which I'm pretty sure most of you guys haven't. I didn't even hear about this movie before until I heard a good friend of mine, John Grani, discuss it. Which, by the way, if he's watching out there, he did a fantastic show talking about this movie to where it made me go, Hey, I want to watch this movie and check it out myself. And... Uh, it was a hell of an experience to see this movie. I mean, this is just to me true horror. At its, it's just true horror at its best. Um, in the first segment, Dumplings, it's got a great story to it. It's about this girl who, at one point, she was one of the like most popular actresses uh, out there. But you know, she's aged, she's older now, and she hears about this girl named May who makes these dumplings that if you eat them you get younger and the story basically goes on from there you got little twists and turns like okay why are the dumplings why do they look so weird what is that red mushy stuff that they put in the dumplings what is that crunching noise that you hear and if you see this if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about you're these little hints here and there you're wondering okay what are these things they don't seem like normal dumplings they don't something's really like you're on the edge of your seat the entire time with the segments going on, and you're wondering what is going on here. And May is not everything that she appears. You know, there are twists that are involved, there are insanely shocking moments, there are some pretty graphic scenes in this segment. Um, when it gets disturbing, it gets disturbing. When it gets shocking, it gets shocking. But to me, it is filmed well, has a great story to it, has great characters. And the twist, I thought, was absolutely amazing. So this first segment, Dumplings, I thought was just nailed. The acting was nailed. The setting. A lot of the shots of like a poor kind of neighborhood where they don't even have doors on the building. Like, they have these sliding doors that kind of open and close. Just this really run down side of town. That rhymed. <laughs> but this really run down area made for a great atmosphere um it was filmed well it was directed well it was acted well and the twist i thought was <laughs> one of the most shocking twists i have ever seen in a horror movie yeah, i'm not even exaggerating that it is it's disgusting it's depraved it's horrible but it is effective at what it does it does disturb you it does shock you and uh that twist working out the way that it does, the slow burn atmosphere, fleshing out characters, um, you know, making this movie very, uh, just very effective. Now, uh, I just got done, I was reading this real quick. I said that this was a Japanese horror film. It actually says South Korea right here. 
So I'm thinking it's a Korean. This is Korean horror film. So my mistake about that. I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, dumplings is an amazing segment. I really enjoy it. Uh, it was really effective. The second segment cut, I thought was definitely the right direction to go because after following that heavy of a segment to have a more lighter segment, a more bonkers segment, I thought made sense. And the second segment cut, uh, cut, I thought was extremely well made as well. And the story also here was great. You know, it opens up with a movie being made about a vampire, I think. And this director goes home, gets kidnapped, wakes up on the set. And there's this crazed man there who begins torturing his wife. I guess his wife was a very well-known piano player. And uh, she has her... It's a great image. This image of the piano and the strings going up. And him, the husband, being tied to this wall... Just the, the image of that scene, the set design of the set in the movie uh, was cool. It looked classic. It looked unique. It looked visually appealing. Like it was a cool looking setting. Um, and basically there is this guy there who uh, is really upset at our lead guy in this segment uh, because you find out this guy is a crazed extra who used to be in this director's movies. And he feels like this director is rich, but yeah, he's a good guy. And he's like, there's no way you're rich and you're a good guy. You're hiding demons. You're hiding something. And today we're going to find out if you're really a good person or not. And this segment goes on for like 25, I'd say 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes, somewhere around there. Um, and you, you find out more about these people, more about the crazed guy, more about the director and the wife. You know, I think it's like every 15 minutes she gets a finger cut off. And uh, the crazed extra challenges the director to kill this kid. You know, if you kill this kid, you commit a sin, I'll let your wife go. And, you know, you are no longer this perfect guy. And along the way, you start finding out things about certain people in that segment until the ending, which is a very bloody, gruesome ending. And a very shocking ending, too. Again... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a slow, slow, slow paced segment, but it's not like wall to wall action. It's a lot about just this, this crazed guy, the actor who played this crazy dude did a fantastic job at, you know, making you scared and creeped out, but also making it just so outrageously funny that you can't help but chuckle at some of his dialogue. Um, it really entertained job by him, the director, the wife, all the acting in that segment was really well done. Dialogue heavy segment. Um, and again, nothing supernatural, nothing like ghosts and stuff like that. This is another just down to earth, kind of like a torture segment. And when the torture scenes happen, it's really messed up. There are certain scenes in this segment that are really hard to watch. Um, and one scene in particular involving a blender. So if anybody has seen that, that segment in this movie, you guys know I'm talking about the blender segment. Well, the blender scene in this segment, it's hard to say, is uh, really disturbing and shocking. Um, but, you know, it's it's a really well done segment. Uh, it's intense. It's shocking. And uh, definitely another really solid segment in this film. And then the last segment, which is a Dekashi Mike directed segment, which I thought was a great segment. This is an underrated one because apparently the fans of this movie, to them, this segment's the weakest. But to me, it's a really... Like, to me, all three segments are kind of on the same level of being really, really solid and really, 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 really well done. Uh, the third segment was insane, shocking, disturbing, crazy, and it was a hell of a way to end this film. Um, basically, you've got this girl, she's being haunted by something, there's something supernatural going on, she's trying to figure out what's going, what it is, what's haunting her, and you found out that's her past coming back to literally haunt her, and when she was a kid, um, there was an accident, 
I don't want to get too much into the story because I want you guys to watch the movie for yourselves. There was an accident when she was a kid where somebody got killed by uh, by accident. And the person that got killed has come back as a ghost. And it's up to the lead to, to go back to where everything started to kind of face her demons. And when she gets there, uh, she has to deal with her demons and deal with memories and deal with all this crazy stuff that's going on. Uh, just crazy, crazy, insane stuff. Again... A very psychological segment, um, very crazy, lots of insane visuals. Um, this is the one that utilizes the just insane editing, and you're seeing these visuals of a doll just being, like, crunched up, and, like, the way that it was done, they made it intense. It was a scene where a doll is being pretty much crunched up to, like, like the limbs are being broken and stuff like that. They made that suspenseful. And if you can make that to like stuff like it's like when I, re when I reviewed Funny Games. And Funny Games, they made uh picking up eggs and dropping eggs suspenseful. When people like when filmmakers can do that stuff, I have a lot of respect for that because you think about it on the surface like, "Oh, it's just a doll being like broken and stuff like that. Or, oh, you're just seeing a shadow over here, uh, which is in the segment as well. You're seeing like a shadow over here. It, when you when you say it like that, it's like, oh, that's not creepy. But when they do it in the movies and they the way they film it, the way it's done, it ends up being really creepy. Um, and it's not a lot of jump scares. It's just about the visuals that you see in this scene. Um you see this part where there's a box and the box opens a little bit but it doesn't open all the way it doesn't jump scary it doesn't open up all the way it opens a little bit and you just see barely what's in the box and it is it is chilling it is really really chilling there's a scene where maybe you see a ghost over here and you just see the shadow or there's a really creepy shot of down a long hallway and there's somebody there's something in this room Far down the hallway, you can barely see it, but you can just make out there's something down there at that hallway, and it's like a shadowy type ghost figure. Very creepy scene. The ending of the segment was shocking. Uh, once again, direction on point. The atmosphere, it being the snow, the winter, it's very cold, brings a great look to this segment that makes it look different than the other ones. Um, this one's more of a psychologically supernatural type segment with a really disturbing backstory and um, just overall really well done. And I can't recommend this movie enough. I, do, I know I didn't get too much into detail about these segments, but I want you guys to go out and experience this movie for yourself because it is a very shocking and horrifying film uh, anthology. But... Yeah, anyways, guys, it's going to be it for my review on this movie. I just want to do a quick little review on this movie. But uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good night. And Explorer of Horrors out. Peace, guys. See you later. Actually, before I leave, I should probably rate this movie, shouldn't I? If I were to rate this movie, I'm going to give it probably a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10. 7.5, 8 out of 10. If you've seen the movie... How would you rate it? If you haven't, definitely check it out. But now I can say goodbye. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching the review. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. But anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Explorer 4 is out. Peace. Peace for real this time. Peace out.